welcome everyone to the 2024 Cobblestone Cobblestone Indoor Car Show at the Monument Civic Center here in Rapid City, South Dakota. Today we have a collection of nine Studebaker vehicles, everything from a 1963 Studebaker Drip Van, a 1958 Studebaker Transstar four-wheel drive pickup, and a bunch of beautiful cars in between. Today we very fortunate to be here indoors where it's nice and warm. This morning it was like six below zero. We had six inches of snow two days ago, uh, but the cars cleaned up really, really well. Um, if you start on this side, you can see the green teal 1959 transfer pickup. And we have a 51 bullet note. That was owned by his grandma and grandpa. We have a 53 Starlight Commander. We have a 60 large wagon. We have a 60 large convertible. We have a 61 Hawk, 66 Commander, and a 1983 Monty, and a 1963 Studebaker. We have a little bit of memorabilia in the, in the show today. We have a uh, hot rod Studebaker bench down in the corner for people to come and stop and get their photographs taken on. Hi, my name is Craig Dalkey, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my 1951 Studebaker Champion Starlight Coupe. My grandpa had bought this out of a widow's yard back in the 90s, and 1974, I'm sorry, and he fixed it up, got it running. Him and his friend painted it green. Then in 1993, my grandpa had passed away, and my grandma passed the car on to me. Since I've had the car, I've put a new wiring harness in it. I pulled the motor out and replaced the oil pan that was uh, crushed on it, resealed everything. Uh, major things that I've done to it, as far as uh, away from what my grandpa had done, is I put wheels and tires on it, and then I put a uh, newer leather interior in the car, and uh, it uh, runs and drives uh, beautifully. Just uh, you hardly hear it running as you sit and idle. One of the most unique features is the propeller on the front. My grandpa took two chainsaw blades and welded them together and bent them and then mounted them to a heater motor that he set inside the grill ring and wired it into a switch. So at parades and stuff, he would turn the switch on and run the propeller uh, during the parade. I've got it locked down, so uh, when I'm driving at about 35 miles an hour, it gets to spinning too fast, so I lock it down when I drive it. I enjoy the car, and I've had it uh, since 1993. The original color was uh, gray, and like I say, my grandpa and his friend painted it to green, and I left it that way in, in, in uh, memory of him. This is a 1953 Studebaker Starliner Coupe. This was uh, originally a V8 car. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it came with an automatic or a manual when it was originally built. Uh, this car has been heavily modified, has a hot rod 350 in it with a turbo 350 tranny, Mustang 2 rack and pinion steering, power brakes. Um, it's pretty much got all the options. The only thing it's missing is air conditioning and a heater. It does not have a heater. Let me tell you what, it was kind of cold yesterday driving this car to the show. A fun car to drive. Uh, drives like a modern car. You can run 80 miles an hour all day long. Never even skips a beat. Um, has, like I was saying, modern brakes, modern wheels. Everything about it has been updated. It's an older restoration. It's probably 15, 20 years old since it was done. So it's starting to show a little bit of signs of age, but it's still a good looking car. This is Rod and Janet Young's 1958 Studebaker half ton four wheel drive pickup. We bought it in 1989 from a gal that Jana worked with at Linford School in Laramie, Wyoming. The truck is all original. Basically, everything has been replaced or restored. It's, we did the best job that we possibly could do on it. The paint color, we couldn't find a factory match on it. So I had a little dealer's sales brochure that had the color in it. And that's how we found the color to put in the truck. The uh, truck was used as a farm truck, and the farmer or rancher raised sheep, and the coyotes kept getting his sheep. So he bought the truck to take care of the coyotes. 
He did not shoot the coyotes. He ran them down. And at the base of the Snowy Range Mountains during one of the glacial periods, there were all these rocks about this big around. And the truck frame has broken in like seven or eight different places. So we had to get a different frame. The, when we bought the truck, it had sat down by the Little Laramie River and the front and rear axle had been full of water. So we had to find a new front and rear axle for it. The body was so beat that we bought a truck from Montana to have a decent body on it. The only parts that original on the truck is the engine, the transfer case, and the vehicle identification number. Everything else has been replaced. This is my 1960 Lark. My husband gave it to me for our 30th wedding anniversary. I had said a long time ago, if we have to have another Studebaker, I want one of these. So, wish came true. Yellow is my favorite color. We drive it a lot, and I love this car. This is my uh, family's, my mother's original, aunt and uncle's original car, bought in November of 1959 in Brookings, South Dakota. Uh, I got it from my dad in 1996, just before he died, and it was in pretty sad shape. And I uh, had a bunch of work done to it, had the kids work on it so they could do stuff mechanically and learned a few things. And both of them have kind of become a little bit motorheads, and it's been very important for the, the family. So it's, I got this one from my dad with 59,000 miles on it. I have 90,000 miles on it. I finished this paint job for my daughter's wedding 20 years ago in 2004, and it's not been touched since. So it's it, it's been a labor of love, and I was really glad to restore this and save at least one station wagon. Yeah, I'm, I'm Perry Myers from Minotaur, Nebraska. Uh, this is my 61 Studebaker Hawk. I restored it about uh, 24 years ago, and uh, I got it from a friend of mine that had bought it in a salvage yard, and he bought it. It was going to be crushed if he hadn't bought it. It had a lot of parts missing. It took me about two years to gather up parts, maybe even longer than that, and then another two to put it together. We we drive it all over to shows and stuff and uh, have a lot of fun with it. It's been really nice fun car to have. That one is 1966 Studebaker Commander right here. This was the last year of Studebaker production anywhere in the world. It was built in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Um, they closed down mid-year in 66. Anyways, it's got a small block Chevrolet engine, 283, with a three-speed overdrive transmission. Interesting note about the, the small block Chevy that are in these. Um, Studebaker, when they closed up South Bend in 64, they closed the foundry. When the foundry closed, there's no more Studebaker engines. So they had to find a replacement motor to power their cars. They tried a Ford engine, too big. Tried a Volkswagen engine in the back of the car, and that was like way underpowered and really a dumb idea. Didn't get very far. Coincidentally enough, Checker Taxi Cab was in the process of running or going to convert to a small block Chevy 283 using a Borg Warner transmission. So Studebaker went to Checker and they said, can we buy the bell housings to adapt the Borg Warner to the Chevrolet engines? So they, they agreed, they made a deal, and the Chevy engine became the power plant of choice. If you didn't have a V8, you would have had the, the six-cylinder, and it was also a Chevy. Um, kind of a no-frills model. The uh, No extra stuff, no power steering, no power brakes, no air conditioning. Does have four doors and a heater. It was basic transportation, but a good, solid, defendable car. Um, this car, I bought it out of uh, Colorado, so it's really rust-free. I've been underneath it, and it's just very, very nice underneath. Um, just a good driver. What we have here is a 1988 Avanti convertible. Now, Avanti was produced and manufactured by Studebaker, and the purpose of building this car was to compete <laughs> in the sports car market against the Carvette and the Mustang. But some particular things about the car is that in the past, the Avanti has set 
land speed records. This particular car in 1988 was factory tested at 178 miles an hour. It's also unique in that in 1978, being a silver edition model, there was only 73 of these convertibles made, and this is one of those 73. This one happens to be still all original. Paint, interior, everything about it is still all original. The paint is called a black cherry. It's sometimes when you look at it, it's black, and sometimes when you look at it, it's purple, depending on the light, the way that it focuses. So it really pops out and stands out at you. Um, it's all original. It, uh, it even came with a telephone, <laughs> the power windows, power seats, power top. It's got a black top, which is really goes with the color uh, when it's up. And it's a very good running car. And it happens to be for sale. $35,000 and this one can you be yours, your own unique car. Okay, now, if you really like this car, give me a call at 605-517-0064. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you on it. Hey, it's Mike Proyos here with my 1963 Studebaker Zip Van. This was a postal mail truck. Here we got a Pop Rod Studebaker bench. This is a collection of leftover parts that I had from various projects. Being a good friend of mine, put this together one evening in his workshop. Um, the original Studebaker tailgate is in a U. Um, we had to jump up and down on it to get it as flat as it is right now. The belt covers, of course, are from a Studebaker V8. The headers are interesting. A lot of people try and guess what they came from. They're actually 302 long tooth headers. The front down here we have Ford 61 uh, Ford sedan tailings. The bumper down here, the chrome bumper, is actually from a 1976 Ford Bronco. So we have quite a collection of parts. Again, it was all scrap, just laying around, put it together, making a really cool thing. Surprisingly, comfortable. So the, the armrests are kind of uh, unusual. I was trying to figured out a way to mount these headers and I was going to use the valve covers as the actual armrest. So we couldn't figure out a way to do it, make it look right. So we're pondering how we're going to do this. Daryl was on one side, I was on the other, and I said, give me that header you've got. And we reversed. He gave me his and I gave him mine and I flipped it upside down, kind of like it would be on a boat, like a race boat. And we both looked at each other and was like, there it is. That's, that's the way to do it. Then we put the valve covers actually on the on the, the bench itself, so um, it, it's a pretty cool piece. Um, but yeah, this is uh, here for the crowd to sit and take photographs and just enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for watching our video.